And without further ado, uh, my friends, many of you, you know, tuned in to hear our special interview tonight. This gentleman started rocking over 40 years ago as a teenager, uh, was an original founding member of the multi-platinum Grammy-nominated American rock band Jefferson Starship and the band Starship from 1973 to 1990. Uh, since that time, Craig's been a million-selling, chart-topping solo jazz artist. His CD, Acoustic Planet, received a Best New Album Grammy nomination, as well as reaching number one in the Billboard magazine number one uh, and on national radio charts. Wow. Uh, his song from that album, it's called Just One World, has become a part of NASA's Space Art Project. Oh, this is cool, man. That project now permanently remains in orbit above the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> That is mind blowing, Tracy. Um, yeah, and now see if like you know aliens do actually hear that stuff in space, they maybe won't think we're so bad after all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Craig also holds a spot in Jazz Is Magazine's top 100 most influential jazz guitarist of all time. Welcome to the show, Craig Chikiso. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Hey, thanks, Reverend. I came here to, to be able to walk and see again. Heal me, sister. <laughs> you have been healed. I've been healed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you touched her. Now you're going to be 10 more years of partying and decadence. No, <laughs> hey. I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Another 10 years. All right. <laughs> uh, quick touch me, Tracy. No. Thanks for being here, Craig Chiki. So we've been, me and Tracy have been like really excited about the show today. And um, we know that you're a resident here of uh, the Rogue Valley. Can I ask you, are you a resident of Ashland? Yes, sir. Nice. I thought you were, but yeah. I, I wouldn't for sure. Yeah, I love it here. This is just like, to me, it's like Fantasy Island, you know, without all the planes and the, uh, the ocean part. No, I really, it's just amazing living here after, uh, you know, touring around the world and stuff and living in the Bay Area. And I kind of, you know, loved the area outside of San Francisco just a bit. You know, a lot of the yeah. bands seem to live out there in Marin by Mount Tam and all. A lot, yeah. Yeah, then, you know, then it got really crowded and, and uh, wow, I came up here and it was like the way it was back in the 70s as far as you know the vibe and the artists and the music and the natural beauty and everything it is you know it's just so you yeah. don't have to run into all those musicians anymore i mean we used to go yeah. in mill valley you go to the 7-eleven and jerry garcia would be buying cigarettes and <laughs> wow. maria Mulder, grace slick the doobies um i mean everybody lived there it was like the place to be they didn't know about this place yet though yeah so yeah, yeah that's don't funny, tell man. them don't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> and now you're like the ricardo montalban of ashland <laughs> <laughs> yeah fine corinthian leather guitar <laughs> Yeah, that's funny, man. The plane. The plane, boys. Have you been rehearsing much? Uh, obviously, somewhat you have been. Have you been getting prepared for this upcoming show next uh, Saturday? Yeah, the Saturday show is uh, remarkable. Kirby Shaw is this fantastic genius arranger, um, just an incredible musician on his own, but he works with this choir of 60 singers. And, you know, when I heard choir, I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, sort of like... Michael, row your boat ashore. You know, one of those yeah. kind of choirs. Man, it's just the opposite. It's so soulful really? and so rhythmic. And so, I mean, they, they do these interpretations of some of my material, my solo music, as well as some Jefferson Starship stuff that we're going to do together. Nice. And, you know, it was weird because I was at the... Holly Theater a couple of years ago when they were trying to get you know funding to to refurbish yeah. that classic old theater. Yeah, it's beautiful there. It's gorgeous, and they they would they would get like these little tours of people to kind of see what it was like, and it was still under construction, you know. And I found myself touring with this group of people, and we walked on the stage, and I'm surrounded by all these people. Turns out it was this choir, and they just started singing these. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Look wow! At they just started singing. I didn't know they were a choir, and all of a sudden I'm hearing all these arrangements, like and angelic parts. voices. <laughs> yeah, and and soul. Full, you know, voices. I mean, you think about Whitney Houston. She started singing in the choir. I mean, this ah, is more yeah. along those lines, man. I mean, it's. I mean, rock and roll really comes from a lot of that. For sure, bluesy, soulful. And like Elvis gospel, was a big gospel guy, totally. you know, and you know. So little, this little the, Richard, you know, big time. Yeah, exactly. You, the Reverend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, so yeah, we're totally looking forward to uh, getting together and having like the synergistic meeting of the the voices and guitars and the minds. And there's going to be some incredible dancers. So. Uh, nice. I've never been to the uh, SOU Recital Hall. Is that how's that place for shows? I've never been in there. You know, I only did. I was only there once uh, to do a, a little bit for the for the music department there, and it was phenomenal. The acoustics are great. Uh, okay. The yeah, it's a really nice vi uh, venue. I think it seats like nice. four hundred people. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, but so it's pretty intimate. Really, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Big enough, but not too huge. That's cool. Yep, everything sounds good. Every seat's a good seat, and like I said, there's going to be. 
60 singers and that's and, that's and gonna dancers. be so big yeah, <laughs> loving it and if you're wondering if you're listening and you're in the southern oregon area uh tickets are available it's 25 bucks for adults five dollars uh students have a discount you can get, get tickets at paddington station also at the door that evening or online at jefferson state coral coalition.com uh, the event starts at 7.30 p.m. It's this coming Saturday over on Mountain Avenue in Ashland. So that's going to be fun. Um, I had a lot of people writing to me this week because we've been promoting um, that you're coming on the show. Oh, And you know how thanks. people are. It's a mix of, hey, what's he doing now? And I have this story from the past. It's kind of both. <laughs> so one of the things I heard often was this He owes week, me money. <laughs> When's he going to be there? Exactly. And, and those guys are all outside in a van now? No. <laughs> That's what I <laughs> well, They want to collect. Is there a back door? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Stage entrance. But uh, no, but, but one of the things I've got was, are you guys talking about the lawsuit? That's all I keep hearing all day today. It was like, you're going to ask him about the lawsuit? Yeah, I'm we like, can talk about that. I'm like, well, I'm going to ask him, but some lawsuits you can't talk about, but some you can't. Wait, which lawsuit are they talking <laughs> which about? Which one is it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have that many, believe me. Yeah, good. Um, no, I, I had a lawsuit at one point that was settled in federal court a couple of months ago over a, a lost 59 Sunburst Les Paul. That was another question I had for you. Yeah, we got it back, though. And it was a, it, nobody, nobody really lost. Nobody was a bad guy. I mean, we were able to sit there with a, a federal judge in a federal court and work this out with the guy. See, this fellow bought a guitar, like his dream guitar was a 59 Les Paul Sunburst. And over the years since it was, we thought it was destroyed in a riot in Germany when Grace... Grace got sick and uh, couldn't perform. And so we just thought everything was destroyed when the stage was burnt down. But it turned out uh, like almost 40 years later, Pete Sears, his, his bass was um, uh, a Steve Irwin – not Steve Irwin. Uh, it was an Irwin bass that, uh, who makes all these guitars for the dead and all this exotic wood and stuff. Well, it showed up in a collection of guitars that he had made. Nice. And, and, and someone in Germany said, I have that guitar. And so Pete found his guitar that survived this riot. And to make a long story short, my guitar went from uh, Europe to see, it went from Germany to England to Japan to wow. New York to Ohio. And so this poor guy who finally <laughs> bought it like 10 years ago didn't have any idea it was stolen, apparently. I mean, just bought it from a reputable dealer. So we had to go and show that that was the guitar I played on these albums, on these songs, took pictures, serial numbers. And, you know, he felt horrible that he had the guitar, but just like, you know, what do we do? You know, so we ended up working out a thing where he gets to keep it, but I get to play it whenever I want. No, I don't know. Oh, this really? like really that, like a million dollar guitar sitting on my wall in Ashland, you know. Well, that is so cool. So, I had no yeah. idea that was the end result of well, that. Well, you know, it was really cool that two musicians figured it out. We had all these lawyers and insurance guys, and it was just him and me going, Hey man, you know, what do, what do you think? You know, we're just guitar <laughs> players here. That's so amazing. Yeah, so it worked out pretty good. So, the only trick is getting insurance if I want to take it anywhere and play it anywhere, it gets a little complicated. What did I just say the other day? What's worse than lawyers, insurance companies? <laughs> yeah. Them, there you go. Now like, you got them both. Uh, wow, yeah. <laughs> it's like country and western. <laughs> no, no, I like country western, actually. <laughs> That is so funny. So this guy out there, what state does he live in? Can I ask? Or? Actually, he lives in uh, California, and he okay. was down in Malibu. And, and ironically, uh, uh, another guitar like this, a 59 Sunburst that was um, uh, owned by um, Gamma, who am I thinking of? Ronnie Montrose. Oh, okay, was, yeah. Was stolen, and it ended up in a guy's guitar collection in England. One of the guitar players from Thin Lizzy, Gary Moore, had it. Oh, yeah. And because of the jurisdictions in the different countries, they never worked it out. They didn't oh have that little meeting of the minds, and they both died while the, you know while this guitar is being fought over. And now I guess the families are kind of figuring out who gets the guitar. But we were able to get it all done. That's, that's so. Yeah. So there's a guy in California that has a guitar that sometimes you get to take. Yeah, and it's like that's so cool. Yeah, and it was on all these great albums and hits. And well, I don't know how great the albums were, but they were you know they were so some you, of the first early yeah, weekend yeah. visitation yeah, rights. Yeah, exactly what it was. Yeah, so yeah. some sentimental. Yeah, and a know? certain sound too. At yeah. least it did when I played it. I haven't played it in over forty years, you know, since wow. that, that riot. But so hopefully be playing it soon. Soon, yeah. Very cool. It, Very cool. And in fact, uh, Pete, Pete and I yeah. are going to be uh, playing in um, San Rafael, California, in about five or six weeks on the twenty fourth, uh, and that will be the first time that Pete, our bass player, keyboard player, and our drummer John Barbeda from the original band. Dragonfly, Red Octopus, Earth, Spitfire, the nice. tour that we were doing in 78 when, when this riot happened. The three of us have not played together since then because wow. right afterwards, you know, Grace left the band, Marty Ballon left the band, John was in a bad uh, car accident. Yeah. And so we got Mickey Thomas and Ainsley Dunbar and then did, you know, songs like Jane and some of that stuff I was writing back then. Um, 
and I, kind of evolved away from that first lineup. So none of us, these three of us, have not played together since 78. 78. In fact, the original wow. Jefferson Starship has not played together since 78. Wow. Yeah. I, by the way, just have to say, because I, when I was a kid, Jane is still like one of my favorite coolest rock songs ever. <laughs> Wow, Make amazing. him stop. He won't stop playing. <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna, I just want to throw out other titles at you, like Miracles. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be doing uh, some of those songs again. We'll be doing Miracles, Ride the Tiger that you played. Yeah, that, we'll be doing that stuff. And, wow. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's mind-blowingly fun, man. Yeah, I was when I was a kid, I was, you know, of course, everyone's got, you know, there's a certain people, and I'm sure you've experienced it a lot. Oh, I, I'm an airplane person. I'm a Starship person. Me, I was always both. Like, I loved the well, Jefferson Starship. It's like, you know? kind of like Van Halen. Which singer did you like the best? Yeah. Is it Sammy or is it Well, David you know, or, to uh, me, <laughs> both, both the bands are so different in, yeah. their, in their approach. Mm-hmm, but right. I, I absolutely love the Jefferson Starship. So it's such an honor to have you here. Oh, well, thank it's you, It's so man. cool that you're here, man. You Say that to everybody from the Jefferson Starship <laughs> yeah. that comes in. All those Jefferson Starship guys that come in. <laughs> yeah. Um, my only Starship uh, or airplane story, well, I've had a couple. They're small, and I'm just a fan. <laughs> but I wrote to Grace like maybe 10 years ago, and she sent me a handwritten letter back and said, I have no uh, use for photos anymore. I'm, I'm not into glitz and glam. I do art now. And, mm-hmm. But she sent me this nice, long, signed letter, which was really cool. I'll wow, write. that is really cool. Yeah, it was wow. nice. I hadn't, heard, I hadn't heard that she'd ever really done anything. Yeah, like it was, I, I still have it. It's a really nice, nice. long letter, too. Yeah. So you have your own signature guitar, too, correct? I do indeed. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, when I left uh, Jeff, well, by then it was Starship, and everybody that I enjoyed playing with had already left, so it was just me and one of the singers, Mickey Thomas, and the direction of the band was really going towards a keyboard thing, and like I said, everybody else had already left, so I kind of went off and did my own uh, solo music. The fir- first album I did was a real rockin' album. by a, a, Our band was called Big Bat Wolf. Big Bad Wolf. And Mike Klink, who did uh, Guns N' Roses, was one of our engineers in the early Jefferson Starship days. He was, he was working with us on it. But grunge was just happening, and that big hard rock thing wasn't, you know, the doors weren't really opening for us. And then, funny, my, my wife got pregnant, and, uh, you know, you're not, you're not on the road. Someone's going to get pregnant. I've seen it happen before. So, right. so during the pregnancy, <laughs> she, uh, well, I noticed the acoustic guitar was a lot more welcome around the house. So I started make, making little songs around the house for my son and while he was in the womb. And then when he was you know, up and about, I was playing these like really inspired acoustic songs about the environment. You know, It was really the first album, Acoustic Highway. I never knew if anybody would ever listen to it. It was my first solo record. Nice. But wow. I took this acoustic guitar and modified it and um, you know, wrote songs about what it would be like to go on a gorgeous Sunday, you know, bicycle ride, hike, motorcycle ride. It was all about Northern California, Southern Oregon, songs about the redwoods, uh, sunsets, mountains. Nice. And, and like I said, though, little did Good I know stuff. it would end up being the number one album in Billboard, uh, number one independent New Age album of the year. And, so great, man. Yeah. And so at that point, uh, Washburn said, well, what are you doing to our guitar at that point? And uh, they wanted to do a a Craig Chikiso model with my modifications. So part of the, the deal was that they had to plant a tree for every guitar of mine that they made. So for the thousands uh-huh. of guitars that they made, there was a tree planted. You know, Very there's cool. A sticker. So you're it's, replacing the wood. Well, I'm hoping that someday my son, who inspired some of the music, can walk through a forest and tell his kid, you know, some of these trees wouldn't be here if your grandfather didn't, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. do his guitar. Thing. But, <laughs> That's but, so cool. And then since then, I've got, I've got more uh, another uh, line of signature guitars with Carmen, who'd always made my electric guitars back in the early days. And they weren't doing acoustic guitars when I did my solo records. So wow. uh, until, until about the second or third album, I started using we designed a guitar with them. And so I have a, a signature model with them now. Yeah, I was, I was looking at it, the Craig Chikiso signature thin line carving guitars. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's pretty impressive. And yeah. I asked the story behind that. So Yeah, thanks. Um, but speaking of the lawsuit, you were going to talk about that. I got us on a different lawsuit. The, the I one see with a happy how you ending. Did that. Yeah. Hey, well, no, no, I'm not gonna... trying to avoid the story. I no, just know well, that there was a, a happy it's, ending to it, one of them. It seems to be kind of common. Like a lot of bands, especially classic rock bands from the 70s and 80s, it seems like somewhere down the line they splinter, whether it's a feud or a death, and they break up. And then all of a sudden, the guy that played drums 
it's like Canned Heat you mm-hmm. know, or whatever, whoever, or back out with the name and it's just one guy and then the other guy's like, hey, we're not in that band and there's a yeah. lawsuit. It was, it was something very similar to that. It was sort of like when Paul died, this band that he had put together kind of sort of like, hey, Paul's dead and he left the keys in the car. <laughs> they stole right. the oh, car. He's like, wait, I come back. Uh, <laughs> but, but no, uh, seriously, um, the, being the only one on all of the Jefferson Starship and Starship albums, I mean, they really, it was all fun for me, but it was different. Like you were saying, iterations of the band with some common DNA, but but uh, it went through some a lot of changes, you know. And I'm the only one that played on everything, so every guitar solo, everything you hear on the hit records is me. Nice. And I, you know, so I feel like really, I feel like uh, like it's your baby. It, well, yeah, it's like your baby. It's like I'm really proud of what we did together. And I'm, yeah. I was I was when I when I finally left, the the Jefferson name was retired, and so was the Starship name. That was a, that was the deal. That all that okay. stuff wasn't going to happen anymore. And then Paul started using Jefferson for some of his solo projects. And I, I was the first. I'd already had my, my like little fun with my solo records kind of doing well, which didn't happen right away. A lot of people passed on my records. So I was going, oh, I'll never have a career. And then someone signed me and it went to number one in Billboard. So uh-huh. I was feeling really generous, you know. And yeah. so I was talking to Paul and, and um, I was the first to, you know, let him use Jefferson, but only for his solo projects. Because, sure. you know, Paul started yeah, the, the whole name. thing. Yeah. yeah. And he got me in the band. He was the one who invited me in the band. He was always the other guitar player on the other side of the stage when we had two guitar yeah. players. Yeah. You know, I don't think any of the bands are doing two guitar players like we did. And so when, with Paul and me, it like we went way back and I even played on his solo records, you know, so I felt like if anybody, you know, he should be able to use it. But we all had an agreement that no one's supposed to use Jefferson. Sure. So I, I let him use Jefferson. And then I think later Grace sued him uh, and there was a big uh, it went to court, you know, and mm-hmm. she sued him over the name and they worked something out. But once he once he passed, you know, I kind of felt like, well, that was that was it. That was that should be the end of this Jefferson you know, thing because he was the only one that was allowed to use the name. And over the years, he had different people coming and going and playing with him. And his last version, um, you know, it was kind of like a tribute band because they do the great, they do, uh, they do Janice stuff, uh, our stuff, you know, Jefferson Starship stuff. And, and Frisco, some, Frisco sound, or whatever. Yeah. And they do a lot, but they do a lot of, I mean, it's copying the original band. Nobody of the original eight, like who did Ride the Tiger, um, this band calling itself Jefferson Starship now, after Paul died, has only has one. I mean, seven of the members aren't original members. Seven of the original members aren't in the band wow. that's out there now. And so I was, the, I was actually the only one that never used the name. I mean, I, I, they, there was a, a version where Mickey started using the Starship name, and he put together a, a backup band. So it's just mm-hmm. him with a backup band. He calls that Starship. And I'm kind of going, I don't know, man, but whatever. And they asked me to play in each of the bands. But I kept thinking, how can I play in a band with Mickey, call it Starship, with nobody else that was ever in Starship? Yeah. And same with the, the different Jefferson versions. Yeah. And like I said, I was really digging playing myself. Stuff and I, I play my songs anyway. I play Jefferson Starship and Starship songs. Everyone should be like Craig. Like, That's how it should be. Like remain pure in the way it should be. The right thing to do. But well, it was it was know? easy for me to say that because I was having a blast playing my my own solo stuff, yeah. and I, I still played a lot of the hits that Jefferson Starship and Starship did in my set no. with a singer and stuff. So um, having being the only one, the only I didn't ever use the name, and I'm the only one on every record. I felt a little. I just felt like something was there was an imbalance in the universe there was this imbalance sure. in the force when I, this these guys are going well now we're jefferson Starship. i could yeah. totally relate and see and, why you would feel that way yeah you know it's touchy because i don't want to be like you guys can't play or anything of course you can play play the play off i'm thanks play my hits i'm glad you're playing them but you didn't write them and keep you didn't them play alive. on them yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, i'll keep them alive okay <laughs> no, but, there's like just a certain way to do things that's yeah. right and wrong you know well tribute bands keep the music alive and they they they're a great tribute band for that but when people think like my fans or our fans, our fans, the band, original band's fans think, oh, this is that Jefferson and Starship. And they do. I know. They do yeah. think that. Yeah. They think, you know, and they definitely think there's more than just one guy. Right. You know, and uh, yeah, it's a little misleading. I and think we should just have a battle of the bands, all the Jeffersons, <laughs> all the Starships. Actually, get the Jeffersons from the TV show to play something. <laughs> <laughs> Wheezy? <laughs> <laughs> Wheezy versus Grace. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I wish Grace was singing. I actually tried to get the band together before Paul died. I was thinking, you know, seeing these two separate bands, I thought, why don't we, like Fleetwood Mac's doing it? It'd, it'd they, be they, a they... great time right now for the Starship to, like, reunite. If, but, you know, like you said, Paul's gone. 
and well, Grace isn't doing it now. But. Well, before he died, I thought about that because we, you know, Fleetwood Mac and Hart, they used to open for us. Jeff Beck opened for us. And I'm going, man, why don't we get back out there and play? I mean, we, it would be awesome to do the original band again. We're all still alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then Paul passed. Yeah. And then Marty was was really into it. And he, he's ill right now for hopefully he'll get better, you know. Yeah. Um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, we yeah. did a nice tribute to Paul. Remember, we did a tribute to Paul about a week after he died. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I tried to get all of us together. Then after he died, I, I wanted to do like a, this is going to sound a little woo-woo, but I wanted to do what I was going to call a Five Planets tour because there were five of us left. And when Paul passed in January, um, there was this interesting alignment of the planets astronomically that was going to reoccur later that summer. And I thought, man, instead of just playing with Paul under the Milky Way like I was doing, because he's on the other side now. Yeah. <laughs> I said, why don't we actually do a thing? We could be like the five planets and they'll line up again. And it'll be tribute to Paul because he's such a science fiction guy, right? Nice. Yeah. But it didn't, it didn't pan out, you know. So I, yeah. I was still hoping to get as much of the original guys together. And uh, David Freiberg, who has the Jefferson Starship version, just said yes. And they said no. Then he said yes. And then he decided he'd rather do the you know, the tribute version that they're doing. I, maybe I shouldn't say the tribute version. He's trying to just do their version. Yeah. And then Mickey, you know, great one of the great singers in the band. I mean, Marty, Mickey, Grace, I mean, all of them did their own hits. He, he would rather do his Starship version. So now that kind of leaves the three of us. We were always felt like we were a power trio in disguise. So here you go. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like songs like Ride the Tiger, man. We were really having a blast with that instrumentally. So nice. we're going to, yeah, definitely break that up. But do some songs too, like Mir- Miracles and... You know, some of the songs I wrote, like uh, Fast Buck Freddy or whatever, and Find Your Way Back, Jane, you yeah, know, I wrote those. So, so, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. That's uh, about five weeks from now in San Rafael. Yeah, and, and then coming up here, like you were saying, next week we're doing this thing with the Jefferson Choir. See, I'm still in the Jefferson You're family. Right? Yeah. <laughs> St- State of Jefferson. Jefferson Sta- yeah, Jefferson State. That's, that, that is a trip. Oh, yeah, it just trip. dawned on me. Yeah, State of Jefferson. Wow, That's wild. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Speaking of planets colliding, and yeah. <laughs> it's meant to be. Yes, it is. Craig Chikiso is joining us right now. In case you just tuned in, you're at the Church of Rock on KSKQ Radio, 89.5 FM Ashland, 94.1 FM in Medford. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Craig. Thanks for joining us yeah. tonight, man. It's, thanks, it's you definitely guys. been fun. Uh, after the interview, we're going to be giving away tickets to the show you're playing Saturday. Love it. Yeah, we'd love to see you guys there. It's I think there's still some left, although they're selling pretty fast. Thank thank you, whoever's getting those tickets. Nice. We love you guys. So we have a pair of those to give away uh, very shortly. Do you have anything to add, Sister Tracy? I just kind of was um, curious. I know that um, you're... S- into jazz, yeah, obviously. Yeah, were you always into jazz before? I mean, you got with the Jefferson Starship. I mean, were you always? Kind well, my, of- you know, my, that's a great question. My parents were uh, were into jazz at the music of their era, and they would play music around the house. And when I started playing rock and roll guitar, first they got me playing the accordion. I don't really recommend the that, accordion. But, yeah, I, but I know, cannot know. picture you for some reason. Clapton played the accordion. I just, I, you know, so <laughs> yeah, it yeah. wasn't. Nice. Imagine if Jimi Hendrix had started on accordion. But, you know, It'd be the cool thing all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, how, I think there's still an opening. Somebody could still do that, but <laughs> but they always thought. Uh, I would play real music someday, you know, like them, even though I was in the room with my bedroom. So mom. they were musicians. They were musicians, okay. but had, had regular jobs to, to support a sure. family. In fact, I had all my heroes on the wall. I had, you know, Clapton and, you know, Santana. This is before I ever recorded anything. And um, I realize now the real heroes in my, the family were my parents who had the courage to do the day job and, you know, pay for the Absolutely. walls that had those posters on it. And they let me play guitar and bought my first guitar for me. So they thought that some... Someday I'd play real music, and even if I was out playing with Grace Slick around the world with those guys, that it was just a phase I was going through, and someday I'd, I'd wise up and play music. So I know my dad's smiling up there when I do stuff that people call jazz, but to me, it's still rock and roll, man. I mean, you, you listen to the early Stones albums, Pink Floyd, we were just talking about them, um, you, even Starship. We had a lot of what are kind of called jazz elements. We had acoustic not us, but the Stones, too. Acoustic uh, uh, instruments, pianos. Stones had great sax players, uh, jazz, scatting vocalists. For sure. You know, and so did the, the um, Pink Floyd. I mean, some of those instrumental interludes what got, was what got me into the music, was putting headphones on and listening to it like you'd watch a movie. Like the song would start and there'd be a beginning, middle, and an end, and I would just, you know, we'd all go places. Right. To it. So that is kind of an element of jazz, I think, that's common to, to rock and roll. You know, mm-hmm. bands like, uh, you know, Zeppelin and stuff would have these great instrumental breaks, and uh, some of them would be very ethereal and very jazz-like and, yeah. and stuff. So my music kind of has a little bit of that, but to me, it's all rock and roll. So who knew? I, I had no idea. But I, I'll tell you this. A lot of my music's inspired by 
by the outdoors and the beauty of nature. And so I'm really excited about a project we're doing, another Jefferson project. There's a, a, a series, there's a park, uh, the Circle of Discovery concludes all these parks in the area like Crater Lake, um, Shasta, Whiskey Town, yeah, yeah. you know, the caves. So many. So we're, we're going to do a, a, an album this summer where I go to each location and find a kind of a sacred spot and play one of my songs that I've recorded before. That's so rad. Yeah, acoustically and play it there. So each park will have a version of one of my songs redone and then you know the rangers will have some input if they say oh i always really like that right one. and then perhaps an indigenous if there's a local native american flute player maybe one on one song there'll be someone to join in oh, that's a great idea yeah, it's, it's a way to get back to this inspiration and this idea nice. that our parks are precious man i mean that's sacred ground yeah we missed sure. that we missed the cave show you did remember that we were over on the coast and he did yes. the oregon cave show oh. like last year i believe yeah yes. that was the anniversary it yeah. was the 100th anniversary we were so disappointed we won tickets but we couldn't be there Oh, well, I was like, oh man, we're gonna You're go back. Town. That's gonna be one of the places I record in for this this nice. uh, circle nice. of discovery. So it'll be a song from each of the the parks, and uh, that's so that'll cool. be more acoustic than the electric stuff that I was just doing. Well, good, we'll make Very it next cool. time. Yeah, I hope you guys do. It'd be great <laughs> that, to see. That was, it. That'd be great. How does it sound down there in the caves? Oh, well, amazing! I mean, the the acoustics. it's like a natural uh, echo chamber. Right, it's just billions of years old, probably. I mean, old enough that there's there's like bones of uh, saber tooth tigers and prehistoric. You know, yeah. Some some of those little stalag mites that fall. is it mites or tights? Tights, tights are the ones on top, right? <laughs> no, are those mites? No, tights. Tights, tights. Are, mites are the ground. Mites crawl on the ground. Yeah, that, mites and that's, tights. That's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, but some of those will take like uh, ten thousand years just to grow an inch. I've so heard that. The history. So that, those caves are yeah, millions of years old. Uh, unexplored. Crater Lake, yes. another just beautiful place, and uh, I can't imagine doing. Uh, you know, playing up there, that's yes. just got to be kind of a total spiritual experience. I don't know how it could help but be, you know, and I'm really excited about getting that and maybe putting it, getting that energy to come across on the Oregon the music. is just full of places like that. Yeah. So Yes, it is. The state of Jefferson. Can yeah. we get you to maybe um, play us something oh, well, that, like, I don't know. Something in the jazzy kind of yeah, genre? Yeah, that would be awesome. Something that we'll, see. This is, isn't my acoustic guitar, but... Random sampling of a few melodies from that was <laughs> beautiful, yeah. very beautiful. What man. a great sound! Thank, Thank you. you. Just yeah, beautiful sounding uh, guitar. I don't know what. Thanks. Like much about guitars, but is this <laughs> right? Is this uh, one of your? Yeah, yes, this is the uh, the company Carbon that made my my guitars. Uh, the original. Uh, son of the founder has sort of branched off from the carbon company and now he's him and his son are doing these really high-end exquisite guitars and uh, this is a Kiesel version you know the grandfather Kiesel started the carbon company by using a couple of letters from each of his son's names John Carson and Mark and he came up with carbon okay so so now Mark the real artist really he's just an amazing guitar builder and his son are making these guitars now. And this this is the electric um, that's similar to my signature model. Um, but the uh, the acoustic has even, you know, a little bit more of a uh, more beautiful, truer sound. Although I like the clean, the clean yeah. of this. But if you like that, there's there's more of that on the uh, on the acoustic. I have to get a picture of it before you go to put on the website because uh -huh. it's just really a beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful musical instrument. So yes, thanks. It's been a pleasure, uh, Craig, to have you here. All right. Hey, you too. It's Thanks, been forever. so nice, man. I mean, uh, yeah, we'd like to get a couple of pics with you if you could for our website, perhaps. Love it. That'd be that'd be nice if we could do that. Uh, but yeah, you're invited to come back anytime. You're obviously local in Sorrow Wee. So. Oh, yeah, I'll bring a pizza next time, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't even, don't tease me, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, hey, thanks again for making me feel so welcome here. I just love uh, being part of the community and, and knowing that there's stations like this that can play music. Uh, 
in the flow. And, yeah. you know, no one's telling you what to play. You can play what you want. And it always feels like it's coming from, you know, the valley. It's coming yes. from... Our, yeah, it's our a, neck of the woods. Literally. I agree. The, our yeah. paradise. Yes. An organic station and yeah. a community station. And we're, uh, you know, we, we joke about being the last vestige of free speech, but we kind of are. Yeah, last of the DJs. We last really of are. the real you know? ones. Yeah. So, but thank you for the compliment. And we'd love to have you back. Thanks. Anytime that you want to come. Absolutely. And, uh, this weekend, I'm sure the show is going to go fabulous. Well, let's give away a couple tickets right now. Let's or, do that. Uh, we're we're going to add you and one of your friends to the guest list for that show, which is happening Saturday. Once again, if you just tuned in, uh, chatting with Craig Chikiso, uh, famed guitar player. He spent many years with the Jefferson Starship and Starship doing uh, award-winning jazz work now, which is phenomenal, and it's still rock and roll, as he says, <laughs> man. It's right. all the Jefferson State of mind. Uh, check it out. It's the Jefferson State Choral Coalition. Uh, performing with Craig Chikiso this coming Saturday. They're doing American music from like four decades. Craig's playing along, and then there'll be some stuff you'll you'll recognize. So if you'd like to go to that, caller number three. Let's make it easy for people. Caller number three right now at 541-482-3999. We'll hook you up uh, with uh, passes to go to that show, you and a friend, okay? So give us a call right now at 541 482 Three nine nine nine. Third caller. We will hook you up with tickets for that show. In the meantime, are you ready to rock, Sister Tracy, on something that's uh, prepared? Craig, thanks again. All right, you got it, Reverend. Yeah, thank so you. awesome, man. Thanks so much, thanks, Tracy. Yes, Reverend thank Moody. you Catch so you much, uh, Craig. We appreciate it. There's right. the phones. We're gonna go ahead and rock up with something kind of mellow, but something great from 1967. It's Bobby Gentry with an ode to Billy Joe, yeah. right here at the Church of Rock and KSKQ. Why not, man? Enjoy paradise wherever it may be for you. A lot of times it's uh, the home is where the heart is. I was born in Chickasaw County. 